use what you have be creative be inspired and also no idea is is not good like just as god made you to create that right no one else is going to create what you are creating right now welcome to vibing with the podcast where we learn the artistic journey and musical inspiration behind your favorite puzzle color puzzle Today we are vibing with 2023 Celebration winner Alyssa Chambers, creator of Spirit. Alyssa is a graphic designer, illustrator, music connoisseur, and fashion enthusiast who's ready to shake things up. She uses her skills to address real world challenges that empower others to make positive changes in their lives. Well, Alyssa Chambers, thank you so much for joining us on Vibing With. How are you today? I am great. It was really nice to be here. I'm excited to just kind of chat and chat about art and what you guys are doing, which I think is awesome. So I'm excited. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, you know, taking the time. Thank you for submitting. Alyssa is our, one of our winners of the Celebrator, Cole- Celebrator Art Competition, which we are super, super excited. We've been wanting to do this competition for, for a few years now and to actually be able to roll it out and to see so many amazing submissions was an absolute joy. Um, And you had a beautiful piece Mm -hmm. called Spirit. And we thank you so much for submitting. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, how did you get into art? Tell us everything. (laughs) Yeah. So um, my name is Alyssa. I am 23 years old. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator from Brooklyn, New York. Um, I would say I've always been into art. Like, it's always been a hobby or something I've kind of done on the side Um, Whether that's like needlepoint or crafting my own clothing and doing the whole DIY era, Um, bubble letters and graffiti, you know, coming from the city. That is like a huge inspiration as well. Um, That turned into in my later years of high school, stuff like bullet journaling um, and trying to find different ways to creatively express myself. Um, But when I got to college, I felt like college was an academic place. And so I had to do academic things. Um, and so starting out my college career, I was actually in the sciences. I was majoring in biochemistry. Um, I had aspirations of being a doctor, surgeon, um, and a semester in, I was like, this is not fueling my passion. Like, I don't feel the fire here. And though I'm great at science and math, and this is fun for me, it's just, I couldn't see myself doing that for the rest of my life. So I went on a little bit of soul searching and kind of trying to figure myself out. Um, and I, I landed in in design and in creating. And I, it had been something that had just kind of stuck with me my whole life that I didn't know I could create a career out of. Um, and so I switched my major. It was the best thing I ever did. I graduated last year with my Bachelor of Fine Arts and um, yeah, my Bachelor of Fine Arts in Graphic and Interactive Design. Um, and yeah, it, it's super, it, that was a super exciting and a super awesome moment for me. Um, and since then, I've just been trying to create as much as I can, create artwork that's bright and fun and that inspires. So that's kind of where I am. That's so cool. I, I know you have like, the pieces you have for us is like a calligraphy piece. Is that something you yes. uh, lean towards or is it like, I know you say you've done a bunch of different options, different mediums but is that something you lean towards calligraphy yes i love 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 type and i again i think it's part of my inspiration is being from the city being in the city seeing graffiti and um seeing kind of Mm -hmm. just type everywhere and then being a design major type is stressed very heavily um and it's it's one of my favorite favorite things to do um with my background in also creating bullet journals and doing that type of thing i think that's where i finally got in my groove of design and kind of learning a little more of the technical things um so type and color is kind of where it's at for me I love 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 doing that type of stuff yeah as a designer I agree I I mean like I learned so much about typefaces and how to use fonts correctly and calling it typefaces over fonts (laughs) all that stuff yeah those little uh, things and Oh yeah, um, everybody mm. around me hates it because I'm yes. such a, <laughs> I'm sitting for like the right font and the right yes. uh, using it properly, and they don't want to listen. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, I'll be like, "Oh, you're really busy, so I'm going to go ahead and create this thing," and then he's like, 
uh, it's okay, but why did you pick that font? I'm like, because <laughs> I just did. I don't know. It was the, the default font. And he's like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah, so much so. more thought that goes into it than you think. Um, it's like one of my favorite mm-hmm. companies is Duolingo. I love Duolingo. I love all of their design. Um, but I think what they do really well is strategically use um, kind of rounded fonts to make the app feel friendly and fun. And people don't think about it, but it completely mm-hmm. changes um the way that you interpret or like feel about whatever it is that you're looking at or interacting with. Thank you. I was trying to tell them that, but they don't understand. <laughs> I, mean, I know when I my see language. bad font, I just don't necessarily know the best. I, mean, I know I always gravitate towards kind of like curvy, gir- like really girly, bubbly fonts. I know mm. that's what I gravitate towards. And so sometimes he's like, no, but, <laughs> but I like, I just always pick the same one. I don't really even, typically change it for what I'm doing. Even on the shirt, like working for this font and trying to decide how to like do the top part because it's you know the top part has yeah. the thinner font, so it's a condensed version of the same font. Mm-hmm. And I was indecisive about what I wanted to do, but I want to keep it on three lines, so I just went with it. But you know, playing around with those type of things is definitely something that yeah. you know I expect to have so much fun with, and I I love it in your design <laughs> as well because I because I never was like. I tried to do calligraphy like a little bit, not to, like uh, seriously, but it was like something that was, like just I like to play with the font in general, not really like drawing it out and things of that nature. So that's yeah. a different like uh, skill set that's really, really impressive and really works, which worked really well on a puzzle. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So you mentioned you went to school for like you were like medical, correct? Like so what made you like why did you feel you had to do that? Like what made you kind of veer in that direction versus do, going art from the beginning? You know, I don't think that art was presented to me as a career choice almost ever. I think mm-hmm. what I've heard of artists was kind of the starving artist stereotype and that idea. And that was kind of it. Um, and then also coming from uh, a black and colored background, like art is not really thought about in that way, right? Like it's something we appreciate for sure. Um, but to create mm-hmm. art as a career is not, it just wasn't something that to me was an option, right? Especially when I was a great academic, like I, in, in my studies, um, I was doing super well. And it was fun. It was entertaining to me, for sure, to be doing that. Um, But when I started thinking about it becoming a career, um, that's when I was like, I don't know about this. And I was doing, continuing to do creative things, whether that be, um, like, playing instruments or taking up photography, dancing, like, doing all of these other things. And the reactions I was getting to from other people to my major and, like, what I was, the career path I was deciding was always like, what? I thought you were going to say you were <laughs> an artist, you're a painter, you're a photographer, you're this, that, third. Um, and eventually I was like, maybe I should just do that because this, these are the things that I'm continuing to gravitate towards, right? Even through school, even through the science, um, I, I continue to like have a, a huge passion for creating um, that never stopped. So that was kind of that. Um, but I also, I appreciated the challenge of math and science and the problem solving aspect of it. And I think that's also what led me to design more than just being a drawing or a painting major or art history or something. Um, the idea that with design, you also get to solve problems still and kind of think strategically. Um, and then you have the visual component on top of that was like super intriguing and it kind of just mashed everything up into one. Um, it made it fun. So, yeah. I, I was gonna, that. I was gonna say that. I mean, that's <laughs> exactly what design is. So I was, I was, grew up doing like you know arts and comic books and stuff. But I wanted to switch to something that was graphic design because it was something I like, saw a career path in. As far as like you know this, you know, uh, you know people who design for a living and career stuff. Um, and so it's like I said, it's a problem solving thing. So I think something you have people really think about is enough. But you're definitely solving problems and and uh, yeah. <laughs> So I, love yes. I love that you like I know that's for me one of the biggest things I struggle with is like I'm good at this thing but I don't love it you know like I like I like I'm so like I always ended up doing like 
you know, prior to, to actually, you know, starting Postal Color, like I was always doing jobs that I was good at and I was like miserable. It's like, I'm like, I'm good at it. So I should like it. Right. Like, and I'm like, but I like am so freaking bored or like, I just, mm-hmm. I, I cannot do another day of this. Like I'm like dreading going into work every day, you know, like, um, you know, not for all of my jobs, but like, you know, <laughs> I've had moments like that where I was like, Oh, yeah. I don't want to do this again. You know? And like, so the idea of finding something that you are passionate about, like is how you can get through the day and how, even when mm-hmm. something is challenging, it's worth it because you have a passion for it. So, yes. um, you know, that's, I think that's just so important to teach people. Like I think about the fact that I have two little girls and like wanting to like, that's like some of the, like one of the biggest things, like I was trying to like instill in them and like want to like show them, you know, yeah. with having a business and like, going all in, like, this is how you live the life you want to live is by going after what you gravitate towards, what you have a passion mm-hmm. for, because, you know, because it will work out if you're, if it is something that you really care about and that you will do, you're willing to do work for um, versus, yeah. you know, of course you can, you, you can make a living doing something that you're good at, but don't like, but you know, it's just not the same, um, you know, as far as results. So I think we're always supposed to monetize our skills as well. Um, and so just because, again, mm-hmm. just because you're good at something doesn't mean you have a passion for it. Right. And, and having yeah. to monetize it, or like do something with it in that way, it also just like takes the fun out mm-hmm. of it, right? Because being good at something or being skilled at something feels rewarding and it should feel rewarding to be good at something. Um, but when we add that mm-hmm. extra that extra layer, that extra step, it's kind of just like, oh, you feel like you have to do it instead of you're wanting to do it, um, which is difficult. Mm-hmm. And so especially when you bring money and business and things into it, it has to be like, at least for me, has to be something I'm passionate about to be doing every day Um, and to really figure out how you can make an impact, right? That's super important to me. So to figure out how I can make an impact with something I'm passionate about, much easier than figuring out how to make an impact with something I'm good at, but don't really like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what did your parents think when you were like, hey, I'm not going to be a doctor? (laughs) Or like, was that like, (laughs) they were like, uh, kind of pushing you towards or were they like excited for you how did that how did that reaction go I want to start with I love my parents I love 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 my parents um they were taken aback for sure taken aback for sure and I think what added to it was I didn't decide to change my major until I was entering my junior year um so that was a little difficult right going from one place where I'm in the sciences to this completely new direction in the arts um but you know my parents are awesome. They've always supported me and they'll support me in everything I do. Um, as long as I was serious about this, right? We can't just change and switch and swap and explore life Ooh. forever. Um, mm-hmm. So they were they were super supportive and in making sure that I was um, doing everything I could to make sure I was successful in this path um, and that this was the path that I, I stayed on. So they were really understanding. I think the hardest part about the switch was that they just didn't know what design was. And especially in our community, I think it just, it it's just, we don't know. And it's crazy because we interact with design every single day, whether it's the clothing you wear, whether it's everything on the shelf, the brand names and the companies that you're working with, the car you drive, like you're constantly interacting with design. And so to explain that it was a little difficult. Um, so they had some difficulty, like kind of understanding what it was I was doing fully. But they knew I've like always been creative and they saw the passion that I had for it. Um, and so they were right mm-hmm. there kind of supporting me along the way and learning with me. So it reminds me of uh, I was watching like like I, I on my newsfeed, I get a lot of like clips of like the Cosby show and like different world, and, like all those shows. And like there's a clip of Claire Huxtable, like when when Sandra said she was like d- didn't want to be a lawyer anymore. And she's like, we spent all that money on Sanford. Like we spent, <laughs> are, you, are you, you owe me a whole lot of money. <laughs> like she, <laughs> she was yes, like, no, yes. you change your decision. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I definitely understand like being like, wait a second, like, yeah, you sure you so. want to do this? We we we've gone down this path for a little bit now, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, celebrate your. How did you find out about the competition? Were you aware of Puzzle Color before? Like, how did that 
uh, turn out? I couldn't tell you how I found Puzzles of Color, but I found you guys somehow, some way, um, and followed you a, a while back now. And I just loved what, like, the whole the whole goal and what you guys are doing, especially given the pandemic. And we were all kind of looking for some puzzles and some things to do. And we are just, in, in the art space, it's really hard to find um, Black and representation for black and people of color and um the latinx community etc um so i just loved i loved what you guys were doing and i i kind of was just following along your journey and um the way you guys are bringing representation to black artists and providing a space for more representation and um congratulations also on (laughs) you guys getting into target i thought that was so awesome right um so just following you guys' journey. And so when I saw the Celebrator contest um, and that opportunity, I had already kind of begun making the design for Spirit. And I, it was something that was heavy on my heart at the time that I felt like was um, a message that I wanted to put out. And so I figured, why not, right? Why not apply? This is something I feel really compelled to do. Um, and again, I just loved everything that you guys stand for, everything that you guys are doing. Um, and I would love to support you all in that way as well. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, actually, you're one of the, like, the three top, the first three pieces we had got submitted. And I was like, when I first saw that, oh, yeah, that's going to be one of the finalists for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was super excited when we uh, got to, you know, we had discussions about it and when we had our own big meeting, it was just like three hours of debating. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, your piece got in there and of course, you see how it happened, it ends up and it was a very high devoted piece. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love the message behind it. Um, I think it, it's going to look great as a puzzle. Uh, I think it's a 500 piece puzzle, so it's going to look really well. So you said it was like something that gets called to you, just kind of something you wanted to really do. Was there anything like particular how... Like the color choices and the, the the messaging, what was it all coming from? Yeah, so at the time I had um, just heard learned about the sixteen nineteen project. I'm not sure if that's something you guys are familiar with. Um, by Hannah Nicole Jones, mm-hmm. it's a book. It started out as a um, New York Times special edition, and it's also a Hulu documentary, which is where I came in in contact with it, and it um, did an incredible job at just kind of educating and talking about the history of um, Black Americans in this country and just um, kind of what's happening now currently and the impact that um, just the history of this country has had on our current circumstances. And one thing that that made me feel was pride to be um, American, to be a Black American, which is something I have not felt before. Um, it made me feel like I had a right to be here, right? And it also just highlighted all of the joy that we have created um, from when our ancestors landed in this country 400 plus years ago, um, all the way to now. Like, I feel like we've never stopped fighting. We've never stopped finding places and spaces for joy. Um and I think that is just, that was just so important, that perseverance. And especially with, you know, just the way that, that things are panning out right now, especially in this country, I feel like there was a lot of a, a lack of hope um, and a lot of people with their heads down and, you know, trying to get through hard times is always difficult. Um, but that fe- I felt like everyone needed a reminder that through everything that we've endured as a people, they have not ever broken our spirit they can't break our spirit right um and so I wanted this piece to be very bright I love color um I wanted it to really feel like explosive um and fun and joyful and I wanted people on the receiving end um to not only just get the message but to feel the message right I wanted you to really feel it and if you didn't feel like um your fear, spirit was full, right? If you felt like your spirit was was cracking, I wanted you to really um, be filled, be filled by all of the color. And so I, anywhere I could find a place to put color, I was putting color, just as much color as I could, layering and layering, color on color on color on color. Um, 
because I feel like we're just a bright and bold people. Like when I think yeah. about black people, when I think about um, Latinx people, I, which I also belong to that community, um, it's always fun, right? We're fun. We will find a way to make light out of something dark. We will find a way to crack a joke. We will find a way to make music, to dance, to have a good time. Um, and I really, really, really wanted that uh, to come across. So that kind of um, bled into the decisions that I made in, in creating this piece. And um, yeah, I think I think that's that. I love how like positive <laughs> you like you are because I know sometimes you see something like the Cincinnati <laughs> IT Project and you're like, wow, like this just continues to happen. You know, like and, it, and you can have the opposite feeling of like, why is this happening and why? Yeah, and you know, like and you know. And so, so like, I love that, you know, you have that positive spin on it and that positive yeah. outlook. Um, and I know that that's something that like, we also like in our like decisions about art and like, in like mm. when we're like kind of an- analyzing and deciding what we want to do, we try to always, you know, like, you know, you, you see like history stuff and you see like stuff about slavery, stuff about like, you know, like things okay. where you're just kind of like, you know, and then there's the whole question of like, oh, you know, are you trauma, you know, are you like baiting trauma or kind of a thing? And so it's like, you know, how do you show these things or do you even want to show these things? Because there are so many other beautiful things about the black community that we should also celebrate and educate mm-hmm. on. Um, And so like, sometimes it's like, okay, well, you know, like, do we want to actually have a puzzle of a slave? Like not particularly <laughs> you know like yeah. um you know but then like you, but like having that story of like you know this is a part of our history but it is not the entire history this mm-hmm. is the and, the and this is what we persevered yes. through versus like this is what happened to us um is like a much p- better view and better way to look at it um and so I, I just love that that you have that you know that positive outlook <laughs> thank you yeah I feel like as a community we can get bogged down in the history of it all and i think it's really important that we learn mm-hmm. the history that we understand what we've persevered Absolutely. through as a people and you know what it's taken for us to be where we are now and to have the opportunities that mm-hmm. we have now um but it, like i said it's important not to get bogged down by that always right and it's important to also talk about joy and to also talk about light and to also talk about you know the fun and the unity um and the and the positive positivity um that that came from that right like we have the freedom now to be to live um and not always <laughs> right there's <laughs> doing anything while black is is it can possibly be an issue but we still have a freedom that that wasn't there before and we need to live in it and we need to own it we can't be afraid of it um and we can't get bogged down by you know our past as a people Absolutely. I love that. Mm-hmm. I know you said you had the the medical dir- direction at first and then you switched over to, ed- to, to art and even, you know, talking about, um, you know, not necessarily feeling like you could make a career as an artist. What advice would you give to somebody who is considering art as a as a career and like, you know, how they can navigate that world? Use what you have. Use what you have. I think Oftentimes, we think that we have to have the best brushes, the best paper, the best materials, whatever it may be, the best ideas, right? Use what you have at your disposal. Art can be created out of anything. Um, And I think being in school and learning that, um, there's such a range, right? There's such a range of art. There's such a range of materials. And there's also a lot of art that is made out of super low cost or no cost materials because that is what was available to them right we talk about art um made out of junk right or found Mm -hmm. items um which is just Mm -hmm. trash (laughs) right found it's (laughs) it's trash um and you create something beautiful out of it right that is a low or no cost material use what you have be creative be inspired and also no idea is is not good no idea is bad right i think also artists are is so subjective it's almost too subjective sometimes that you get down <laughs> on yourself thinking well this person made the most realistic image of this piece and oh it expressed all of this feeling and i've got three letters on a page 
your three letters on a page can make impact and that spoke to somebody right just because like just as god made you to create that right no one else is going to create what you are creating right now whatever is coming from you was given to you as a gift um and it's meant for someone even if it's one person's eye so use what you have at your disposal um so many of these big or large artists or successful artists or whatever you want to call it um use low cost materials crayola crayons right it does not have to be the most expensive of the most expensive if that's not what you have use what's at your disposal um practice 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 um and somebody's gonna love what you make somebody is going to love what you create i know we've all seen images that's like uh my three-year-old could have made this or that's what we say right but your three-year-old did not make it <laughs> your three-year-old <laughs> didn't make it i'm sorry and somebody thought about the decisions that were put into that piece and somebody else is gonna love it um so don't don't get down on yourself and use what what you have at your disposal yeah i love that uh i love the passion you speak with about this it's so inspirational and empowering um I know Aisha, Aisha Charles, one of our other artists, she uh, would paint like with anything she had. Like she said, she used glass and made like a whole glass mural out of just broken pieces of glass. It was already broken. She didn't break them herself. She was already broken. And she arranged them in a way that it made something beautiful. And she also used like, she used to say she used to paint with like um, flowers and things of nature she found because she just, you know, as a kid growing up exploring things, she just would use whatever she could find. So that's, I mean, a perfect message. And I think it's definitely, uh, a true one, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So what, yeah. what are, you know, kind of thinking about what you were saying, it's like, reminds me of like, how do you feel about the AI thing and how people are mm -hmm. saying, well, we don't need an artist because this computer can make it, you know, like. <laughs> I have mixed feelings. I don't know what to feel. <laughs> I think number one, the people who are using AI to replace artists never we're going to pay an artist to do what they do in the first place. So that, that, mm -hmm. that you are always going to go find something somewhere and utilize that. Um, so there's that part and aspect of it. Number two, AI is trained by artists. <laughs> so without artists creating art, there is nothing to train the AI. Um, and AI can right. also only create right now, right? I don't know what advancements might be made, but right now they can't create something new. They can only create based off of the millions and billions of things that they have um, learned. And so they can't create something new. When we talk about an art movement, when we talk about kind of new styles coming up, who makes those? People make those. Computers can't make those. They just don't have the ability right now um, to, to make those. Um, but I also think there's positives. Like there's ways we can definitely utilize it to speed up um, processes and do different things. Just like we see... Um, for example, Apple has the feature where you can select an object and cut it from an image. That mm. used to have to be hand done. Somebody would have to go and cut out that image, right? And not necessarily AI is what that is, but that's an advancement that people could have said, well, my whole job is to take people out of pictures. What do I do now? Yeah. You move on, right? Things evolve and things change. And so I think what's going to be really important is that we figure out how we can use um, these advancements in technology to aid our creation and speed up our creation um, instead of trying to think of it as a replacement. Uh, and I also think that our attitudes towards AI outside of art and just in general um, need to be human focused and human centered. And I don't know that they are right now. Um, I think that people are exploring all of the amazing and incredible things you can do when training um, in artificial intelligence. Um, but I think going forward, we need to think about how they can be used to um, improve our quality of life, right? And, and, and help us as humans do a better job at creating um, and at exploring and researching and understanding new things. So I, I'm kind of mixed and I'm excited to see kind of the innovations that happen with AI as we begin to see um, iterations and things of um, their programs and their softwares. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little iRobot. <laughs> I, I understand. Yeah, you know, right. I'm there, but I'm also like, this could be really incredible as well if we... Um, 
have a good intention behind it. So I'm excited to see kind of what's going on. I know in Spotify, I, I like Spotify. In Spotify, they have this AI DJ that like mixes oh. your playlist and stuff for you. And I think that's a little strange. Um, but like, I'm excited to see advancements like that and different things. And I, I hope in the art space that we we have some more positive advancements that are going to be helpful. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I know I've seen artists who say they used it as a like inspirational thing as far as like you put a prompt into uh, Mid Journey or one of those softwares. And it's, it's something that you can kind of like get us like something you want to think of. It's like, okay, so I can take that and kind of like use it, it to make something of your own your own life yeah. you know and your own creativity so i think it's in that way it's very helpful uh it just depends on like say how you use it and how what you claim as your own i guess as an artist and what you feel is proper to say is your creation <laughs> um, yeah and yeah like you said like you said if you're a company or a person who doesn't want to work with higher arts anyway it's kind of like design same thing with design the canva when that happened you're not really losing clients for the design world. You're just losing, I mean, you're losing people who didn't want to like pay a design anyway or pay your worth anyway. So, you know, it makes it easier for a lot of people around you that don't want to actually pay a design and you're not being affected by it. At least you look, I, look at it that way, you won't be affected. <laughs> well, I was going to say, and I can say, because I do love me, I think Cam was really, really cool. He, <laughs> but, okay. but. I realize I in my head I think I want to do something. I don't know how to make it actually happen in Canva. So then I I'll do I'll like like I so a lot of times with us like with the company I'll do something in Canva and then he'll go in and then like completely do. He's like I know what you're trying to do and then he'll right. fix it and do it right. <laughs> so so there is yeah. still there very much like you know a difference in like the quality of something from like yes. somebody who is actually trained and who knows what how to do graphics and mm -hmm. and you know messing around mm -hmm. and playing something in camera like yeah, i've done some really the, cool stuff there but yeah the computer definitely also just like reiterates like it, it takes what it learns and just kind of mm -hmm. spits it back out whereas humans are making decisions right you're making a decision to put this mm -hmm. thing in this place and choose this color and add this like we're mm -hmm. making decisions whereas right now i don't think ai is making decisions it's just kind of taking the patterns that it sees um and regurgitating them and we think it's awesome because it was trained by awesome and incredible artists who made decisions um but we yeah, are also yeah. actively making decisions and i think it's interesting that you said about i know what you were trying to, to do um but not right. like you, you weren't quite quite there and so like <laughs> I, I, sorry, I just think that is so funny because I, I see that all the time out in the world. I'm just like, that doesn't quite hit. I know what you were trying. I know what you were going for, right? I know what you were going for, but it wasn't it wasn't um, quite there. And that I, I think that's also cool about kind of some of this new accessibility to design and things. It gives new people opportunities to try um, and to learn, and also just to like I don't know. I think I see more great design out in the world than trash design with this new technology. Um, so that's fun. And that's that that's just super funny to me. <laughs> well, you mentioned Spotify and, and your playlist. Um, you know, we are vibing with, so it's all about the artist and like the art and the music that inspires you. What music um, have you listened to like while you're creating just in general and particularly while you're creating spirit? Yeah, I listen to a little bit of everything, um, but R&B is a must. Like, I, I think I've always got R&B on in the background. I've been really loving some more alternative R&B um, and, like, some newer artists like Victoria Monet and Lucky Day. Um, I love her. You, you gotta love Everybody loves her. Like, she's just so soulful, and you can feel her in the music, which I love. Um Masego and like jazz vibes is also always welcome. Um, and I've been getting more in tune with Afrobeats as well. Wizkid is the dominator. Um, but I also have been loving listening to like Fireboy um, and just stuff that like makes me dance. Um, I love to sing. I'll sing anything. I'll learn all the words. Definitely is also my vibe. Um, Conscious rap. I've been liking Tyler oh, the Creator lately, and 
Kendrick and Cole and all the people. I, I don't know. I think I've always got music, always got music on. So it's just a never ending rotation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just started getting some more Afrobeats more recently. I think his name is Rima. I don't know, actually. But Rama, yes, uh, I love on. Rama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has some good stuff. I'm like, okay. So that's definitely new for me, but I love it. <laughs> well, I love that R&B is making a resurgence because I felt mm-hmm. like it just, you know, God love Mariah Carey, but she turned, she made hip hop and an R&B mold. You know, she, she, <laughs> she, she, she brought them together and they never separated. And I was like, but, but where's my Tony Braxton? You know, <laughs> you know, I was I was kind of missing the straight R and B. So I'm excited that um, that we've got artists that are that are bringing it back, um, yes. and and hoping that it can continue in that way. Because I, I, yes, I, I always oh, that's what I have my that I'm playing in the background all the time. There's a lot of R and B, but I do love J Cole. I just saw I just saw on Instagram. He's, he's like coming back. He's more active there. A little mm. bit, so I'm like, yay! <laughs> Waiting, looking for some new stuff with that. Um, yes. Um, yeah, I'm like listening to you. You're like triple threat over here, dancing, <laughs> art. You got it all. <laughs> yeah, I know. People always, um, <laughs> they just laugh because every time they ask me what I'm doing, I'm into something like completely new and different. And I also. Um, I am living with ADHD, which is interesting, um, but it's also made life super fun. Um, I I know people are always talking about <laughs> stuff they start and don't finish um, and hobbies they start and don't finish, mm-hmm. but I've just kind of embraced it. Like, okay, and for these next couple weeks, I'm into gardening. For these next couple weeks, I'm super into uh, markers and working with markers and just like taking it as it comes and being inspired by whatever it is and when I get into my little uh, moments and pockets of um, things that are interesting and intriguing to me, I just go all in. And um, it, it always ends up being helpful in the long run. I, I feel like I'm just a sponge and I soak up information. And I, um, in that way, I'm able to make so many connections because uh, I just like take time to learn um, and to let myself be obsessed with whatever it is. I don't think we let our child's like, inspiration and joy when we find new things um blossom as much as we should as adults and we should definitely Mm -hmm. still be um searching and exploring and doing and learning always 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 learning um because it's only going to help us to be able to connect with someone else's experience uh i also want to ask you about a little more about like the puzzle itself uh have you do you are you an avid puzzler or do you puzzle at all no, I, when I was younger, I, I used to be super into puzzles. Uh, Pre-flat screen, I was yeah. in, like, I was loving puzzles. Um, and I know when we go on, we go on a family vacation every year, and there's usually a puzzle on the table there. Um, I, unfortunately, didn't have the ability to join my family during the pandemic um, and be home with them. Um, but they were puzzling it up during the pandemic i know my dad also um has been loving puzzles anything and anything black he he wants to support um so lately we've he's he's been growing a little bit of a of a puzzle collection um and so i also kind of in part did this for him who i know would just just love to do this and be a part of that pretty sure he bought five of them in the (laughs) pre-show I was like, that, name sounds, that neighbor's name sounds familiar. <laughs> he so, loves yeah. to support. He loves to. He loves supporting black businesses. He's always. He's like. He's all about it. Especially if you've got something good going, he's in it. He's in it. So, uh, <laughs> and he's a he's a really funny guy. So. That's, awesome. That's so funny. Mm-hmm. That's great. Great family. Love that. So when it comes to spirit, is there any song like in particular or mm-hmm. any music in particular that you think goes well with that? Break my soul. Y'all already know. Break my soul by Beyonce. <laughs> well, this was also this was also around the same time as Break My Soul. And I feel like I also super felt that like I was like, Yeah, you won't break my soul. Oh yeah, we got yeah. we got that going. Like, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Definitely that. Um and I think it's also interesting the resurgence of this kind of disco um, and disco pop 
uh, especially in our community that ha- tends to um, kind of creep back in, I think, in times of um, struggle and in times where we need to find joy, right? It's mm-hmm. funny how um, we react to that and we like take it to the extreme. And so um, definitely that song was was on repeat in the background of um, creating this piece and kind of inspiring it as well. My yeah. three-year-old loves that song. And it's just so funny to me, like hearing her, I'm like, I ain't nobody breaking your soul, little girl, but okay. <laughs> you live your life. <laughs> but yeah, we love it. Are you gonna? Are you going to the concert? Are you going to see her on tour? I am not. That was out of my budget. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I understand. But I love, I love, I love B. Everybody, you gotta love B. Um, but I think my time well, to see you're in New York, right? Hmm. I think my time to see and see Queen Queen Bee has passed. Um, I don't know that she's one that I must see in concert. Um, but break my break my soul was definitely the soundtrack to that piece. Well, if you ever get the chance, I will. I I have been to every single one of her concerts since Destiny's Child. <laughs> okay, uh, so yes. you know, yes, she definitely puts on a show. But I me mean, and I, and that's one thing I was always saying, like. You know, like with with Coachella, having it on DVD. I'm like, yeah. her pricing has gone quite a bit Rare up since when I started going to see her shows. And, uh, you know, and of course, everybody, like you said, had to be inflation, whatever. Yeah. But <laughs> but um, I wish that she had her, she used to do her shows were on like DVD afterwards. And I'm like, I wish she would bring that back, like, you know, streaming mm. of some sort or, you know, whatever. Because yeah. There are people who can't afford to go, but you still want to see your show, and you would you, that's a little extra money on the side, you know. I mean, you're, you're recording them out all anyway, you know. Why not put them out on a DVD? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. but yeah, she puts on a great show. And I was gonna say, you living in New York, I'm sure it's even way more crazy expensive because you you know, when you're in those major cities, then you have the visitors. Um, and mm-hmm. so you know, I'm sure Jay Z will hit the stage and all that, but um, <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you if you can go to a neighboring you if you're already yeah. you know of course don't maybe not make it for it but if you can go to a, another place then it may be more affordable <laughs> to do it that way yes. <laughs> for sure <laughs> for sure <laughs> well um it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you and getting to know you thank you so so much for submitting your art we loved it we had some yeah like I said we had some really amazing submissions like at first we were like oh it's only been like a couple of submissions. And- they were yeah. they were awesome. Yeah, everyone I mean- who submitted. I was like, oof, this is difficult. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm thankful it wasn't me making yeah. the decision. It was difficult. They were really, really incredible. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, narrowing it down was was hard. Like we we have some other artists, and I'm like, I just I love it. And you know, like I said, we have a three hour debate and back and forth of like, mm-hmm. why can't this one be it? I want this one, and you know, like, <laughs> um, but but you know. Super excited for your art. Uh, super excited to get to know you. And um, can you tell us what what do you have next coming up? Like, you have collections. What what? Where, how can people follow you in your art? Yeah, you know, right now I think I'm still kind of learning and growing in my own voice. Um, I've started to create zines, which um, are hopefully going to help me create some impact in, in my community. Uh, which will be available uh, for free download for anyone who also wants to kind of spread that impact to their own communities. Um, and yeah, you can follow me on Instagram for my journey and and see uh, where life takes me post-college um, and entering this new um, era and, and kind of chapter of my life at Alyssa MC Design or Alyssa MC dot design on Instagram um, or on my site, Alyssa MC Design dot com. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. And everybody, please make sure you follow Alyssa <laughs> in Pride Spirit, available now on PuzzleColor.com. Thank you. I wish you all the best, the best, nothing but the best. Thank you for joining us for an episode of Vibing With. Be sure to purchase a puzzle by this talented artist at PuzzlesOfColor.com. You can also listen to a curated playlist of music to pair with this artist's puzzle on Spotify. Mm-hmm.